Welcome to Meh Miniature Painting. Today I'm going to go over Zenithal Highlighting. In my first video on YouTube, I went over airbrushing, and for the example piece I showed a Zenithal Highlight without going over the particulars of Zenithal Highlighting. It was really more of an airbrushing video, which I know everyone has seen, and in fact has broken YouTube, and there are no more questions about airbrushing which will ever come up. So today, it's time to go over actual Zenithal highlighting. So it's a highlighting technique which uses undershading and the translucency of paint to your benefit. So what we do is imagine that the light source, typically the sun, is at its zenith, meaning at the top of its arc across the sky. And so you will have the most light on top of the model and the most shadow on the bottom. So that's the assumption that we all work with because we live on, you know, earth and the sky and the sun's in the sky and that's the light that we see the most often. So to show an example of this, we're going to start with uh, Captain General Trajan Valoris. Hello, Captain General. So this model's already been Zenithal primed. And here he is with the sun at its zenith over Holy Terra. So you can see the shadows and highlights looked correct for the light placement. And while I'm actually going to show how to do this, I'm going to really show a quick visual. So with the first color, in this case black, it will completely cover the model from all angles. Okay, bottom, top, side to side, 360 degrees around. The next color up, uh, gray here in this case, will be at a shallower angle. So it won't go below 90 degrees to the model or perpendicular to the uh, model's vertical axis, if you prefer. And we'll go all the way around on, until it is spraying, spraying straight down. And again, that's 360 degrees around the model. And finally, with the lightest color, white in this case, um, you use an even shallower angle. And you want to focus on straight down on the top of the model. And you can go, you can go out a few degrees, um, but you don't want to go below about 45 degrees to the model. So when you're done, you should see a gradient on it um, when looking from the front sides and the back. If you were looking straight on, a perpendicular to the model, you'll see that gradient. If you look straight down at the top of the model, you should see pretty much just white. And if you look from the bottom, you should see only black. So I'm going to be airbrushing for convenience in this video, um, but you could actually do this technique with a, a rattle can or even a paintbrush. And I'm going to be using a uh, primer, so I'm going to be using the black, gray, and white Vallejo primers. Um, I don't know, I like doing cold Zenithal highlighting with primer, I'm really not actually sure why. Um, I don't prime very much stuff, just flat white. So. Um, that's really the most use it just gets is when I zenithal. Um, but you can actually do this technique with paint. Uh, so if you had it completely primed, you could then uh, paint it with gray and white paint or an ink or something like that. And I mentioned a, uh, a cold zenithal highlight. So you can actually do a warm zenithal if you're using warm uh, base colors. If you're doing flesh or browns, reds, you know, obviously warm colors, then you can change this up by going from a black, gray, white scheme to a dark brown, mid reddish brown, and a bone. So uh, that can get you this same effect, but if you wanted to have warm colors. <clears throat> So you can also use the basics of this technique in a few other ways. So you can uh, do the reverse and have the most light on the bottom of the model and shadows on top. That would actually work well if the model had like a campfire at their feet, something like that. You could also have a light source coming from the side, like a, a model or a window, if you were have some kind of like a diorama with a window in it. Um, so as you can see, this is another <laughs> Yet another McDonald's toy. I like using these for uh, terrain, as I mentioned previously, but also because it uh, they're inexpensive. They just kind of give them to me at the 
at the store. And the rest of this is just kind of um, airbrushing, so I'm speeding it up, but uh, I'll stop and show some techniques. So first I'm doing it all in black. You can see I'm really flipping it over to make sure that a lot of the bottom part is all covered. You, I don't want any of the um, shadows to come back and bite me later. So this model's a little bit harder than most because it has this big uh, thing in the middle. But so here I'm showing so I've cleaned the airbrush and I'm showing there's the 90 degree or if you'd like a, to call it a perpendicular to the vertical axis of the model. So that's where you start and then you go up from that and you go all the way around. And you can go all the way up to being um, parallel with the vertical axis of the, of the model. You just don't want to go below that 90 degree mark otherwise you'll start getting grays into where your shadow should be. <clears throat> so the other good part about this especially from using a priming technique is you can get multiple layers of primer but you use less and less as you go along so you use mostly black you use a bit of gray and then you use just a tiny bit of white so you can get the kind of the benefits of having multiple layers and use a little bit less and you can see that I'm really focusing on the upper parts um, in terms of orientation to make sure that I get a good gradient going across the entire model. Okay, so I finished with gray, uh, cleaned that paint out, and now I'm using white primer. And here you can see that you really want to focus on straight down at the model, like that. You can go up to about 45 degrees as I show, but you don't want to go much deeper than that, otherwise you're going to get a lot of white where your uh, mid-tone should be. And when I was spraying on my glove, I realized it was a little too thin, so I needed some more primer. So that's why you always want to make sure you test on something else before you just start uh, going to town on your model. So at first it's kind of hard to tell that I'm actually adding much to it, and then, um, but you'll start to notice it. Now what I really try to focus on, especially when I'm doing this white, not only is that straight down angle, but also you can really actually push the brush in so into certain areas in order to really up the highlights so like along her back there's the arch of her cape and so where it kind of sticks out a little bit that's where you you could really just zoom in with that airbrush and get a really really strong highlight uh, her shoulders her hair uh, you know her tips of her shoes you know where her hand things like that and so I've done with it really white. You don't need a whole lot. And so here you can see, um, you got to look at it and see, okay, from the top, do I only see white? From the side, do I see gradients or, and places that they should be? And then from the bottom, do I just see black? This one's a little hard because that bottom piece is so big. But yeah, if you look, you could just see mostly black. And as long as those are satisfied and the highlights are popping, uh, then you are actually good. And so 
Uh, obviously, this took a minute because I was recording it, but in all actuality, this would take around well, five, ten minutes, and you'd be all done. So that's Zenithal highlighting with an airbrush. Quick and easy technique that can really up your game and also makes later steps um, just so much easier if you already have that highlight established. There aren't many models that I don't Zenithal highlight. So if you like this video, uh, throw me a like. You can also follow my work on Instagram at Meh Mini Paints and like me on Facebook at Meh Miniature Painting. Thanks.